it in the key. bucket and not under the rock. Right, because it's real hidden under that bucket. Whoa! What the devil's this? Get out of my house! Watch it, and leave the woman alone. What the f She's my betrothed! But I'm not your property! I love her! I'll not let her sway her ass in his brothel! Whoa, slow down there a minute. This is clearly one gigantic misunderstanding. One I can clear up in the blink of an eye. Shove your excuses up your ass. Shut off, or I'll split your skull. Good luck with that. My friend asked you nicely, so please be courteous in return and hear him out, or we'll settle this another way. All right, talk. Hubio, right? Polly's told me so much about you. She said you're erudite and have an open mind. You said that? Well, there's a truth to it. My mind's the open salt, but its open saltedness ends when my betrothed starts wagging her ass around brothels. Get out of here, both of you. Polly's not going anywhere. Let him finish. There's no brothel involved. You see, friend, Geralt just hit the nail on the head. For what you have there is the old publicity placard. Old? Very. From a time when my establishment was under different management. I, however, would never let any indecency take place in my cabaret. My very reputation precludes it. So, what's all this about? Your betrothed is a first-class artiste, and I want to offer her a position worthy of her talents. She's to be my choreographer, and that in turn means she'll receive a share of the proceeds from every performance she... choreographs. You mean to say... coin? And fame. No flirting required. You have my word. Uh -huh. oh. Suppose... In that case... I knew you'd agree. It's settled then. See you at the Rosemary, Polly. I well, didn't even have to I'm off. off. I'll catch up to you. Whew. Never expected that to go so well. You handled it well, Dandelion. Man was body in your hands once you called him erudite. In negotiation, as in combat, the key is to find your opponent's weak spot and exploit it to the hilt. So, time to head back? I've still got to stop by Rotlex. Commissioned some new placards from him a while ago, but Hubio came across the old version. Plowing artists got some serious explaining to do. Who's Rotlex? Never heard of him? Hank Rotlick, famous portrait artist? We're not watching the portraits. Commissioned a portrait artist to paint your placards? Henry's an old friend, needed the coin. And I decided we needed new placards to promote the opening performance. Seats won't fill themselves, you know. I'll go see Rotlick. You head back to the Rosemary, or Priscilla will have my head. Really? You'd go? So I no, seem to be doing so everything else. the hell of it. Tell me where he lives. Portside. See you soon. I am a glorified messenger boy. <laughs> Occasionally gets pissed off on the schools the people he's sending messages to, but all the same. This will go completely smoothly and we won't have any problems. Oh, look, bandits. The 
just once. So I don't have to go into a place, ask for something for something, get Looking it, for and leave without any problems. You ain't alone. Damn our things in debt to half the city. But I'm here to scrape mine for the carcasses pit clean. There's not enough for everyone, so bugger off. Feeding time's first come, first served. Take what you want. I'm just here for some placards. You diff. Didn't you hear me? This is all mine now. Fuck off, freak. <sighs> and here I thought we'd resolve this peacefully. Sword, Garrett. Again with the sword. Pull the sword out, Garrett. Pull the fucking sword out. What the, What are you doing? Please pull the sword out. Why are we beating them up and not just killing them? You regret this mutant. Garrett! Pull out the sword! Why can't I pull out a fucking sword? Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. Why must we beat them up? Ow, let's not get stuck in between these assholes. Tell me what you want, damn it! I already said Blackheads. what I wanted. There ain't no plowing placards here! And Rotlick, where's he? Same place as always. Vagal Butter State, losing his last crowns at the races! See? Wasn't that easy. Could have said so right away. <sighs> yeah, I didn't have to do for all that. F fucking sitting there thinking the game was a screw me over again with a damn sword. <laughs> Nope, apparently I had to beat the crap out of them. I long to curl up with a bottle. I say. Well, so we're gonna go all the way over here. We're gonna talk to the guys. We're then probably gonna have to do these races in order to get rid of his debt. Why can't anything just be simple? <laughs> Like I said, just once I'd like to go to somewhere, ask someone to do something, and get it done immediately without any fucking problems. Roach, why are you down there? That's it, Roach. Oh. Come on, let me go faster. There we go. What the We're fuck is wrong go. with an invisible wall? Thank you, game. Where the fuck are we going? All the way over there, you gotta be fucking shit at me. Okay, we're not gonna record that. Well, here we are. 20 quid says I have to enter a race to pay some debt or other. Uh, nothing hurts as much as between Chucky and Steve. Well, Rutlick, you think you're a considerable sum of debt, but you shan't back out on that account. Eh? You won't have much of a choice before long. Come now, old sport. We can't allow that. Who'd I wager with then, eh? Listen, here's what we'll do. We'll make one more bet. If you win, I'll pay your debts. Yep, typical. You Rotlick. Henri Rotlick. Artist, painter, debtor, and martyr to my art. At your service. Dandelion sent me. Oh, yes. Well, tell him his placards are done and safely hidden away. Yet, alas, I cannot fetch them. As a group of angry creditors has seized my home. Think I might have run into one of them. Then you know my predicament. And now Count de Louverton has offered me the chance to win it all back. I'm to wager on a race. Typical. It's like I wrote the game. <laughs> Generous. Not just anybody could afford to do that. 
Deluverton is not just anybody. He's Duke Sam's youngest son. Sam of the well-known family of gem dealers. One debt more or less makes little difference to him. What's there to worry about? This is your chance to settle up, get a clean slate. We've had a spell of bad luck lately. Should I agree to Deluverton's offer and lose, I shall be in bondage to him for all time. Hmm. I'll win the race for you. Let's do this. I'll enter the race. You'll bet on me, win, pay your debts, then give me the placards. You are that good a rider? Far from the worst. Go tell the Count you accept his offer. Well, it was easy to win last time. I have no doubt it's another of Menga's ideas for cleansing the city. Hey, yeah. Are you still aim to get ten cases of SDS for the feet? Too easy. Hey there. Hey there to you, Zorgard. Thank you. I, I never expected this. May I ask to what I owe this generosity? Let's just say I like to do a good deed from time to time. Can we get those placards now? I'll bring them to the Rosemary in time. Just as soon as I settle my obligations. Fine. See you there. Uh, what's this quest up here? These 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 uh, races are really fucking easy to win, so I'm just wondering how much money can I make scamming these idiots? Hello, love. Greetings. Greetings. Have you come to race, or are you merely a spectator? Haven't decided yet. Speak to the race master if you decide to compete. He's over there on the platform. You seem quite the rider. Though not as good as Luke. A shame, really. I'd like to see someone knock that conceited brat down a peg. These are really fucking easy, as much as I dislike races in general. <laughs> For no particular reason. But, meh. I could withstand to win these things. Wondering if I could take part in the races. If you've coined for the rider's fee and a steed of your own, why not? Decide quickly, please. There's a race about to begin. Sure. I want a race. Grand. Your name and the name of your steed. Geralt of Rivia. On Roach. Excellent. Your opponent. Let me see. Seamus Holt astride Athos. Uh huh. The races are all too fucking easy, really. Competitors, saddle up! On three! One, two, three! Off you go! Uh, nothing hurts as much as life. <laughs> nothing hurts as much as life. Apart from death and other things.
not looking good, I tell you. It's all too fucking easy. The plague. I imagine they get more difficult, do they? Or is it always as easy? Hear ye, hear ye. The final of the Erasmus Vagelbud Memorial Derby is Slow over. Down. The winner is Geralt of Rivia, riding Roach. Glory to the victor. That was easy. How much do Not I win? bad, yet we shouldn't kid ourselves. The competition was hardly stiff. Shall I sign you up for another? I already won a superior racing. These races, tell me about them. They run as per Erasmus Vagel Bud's dying wish. He came into his fortune by gambling and remained proud of the fact to the end. Family doesn't mind having a racetrack right by their house? But the house, his fortune, would not even be theirs had they not fulfilled Lord Erasmus's wish. He made it a condition. Any special rules for the races? They're as simple as Lord Erasmus was. Two competitors, simultaneous start, first to complete a lap around the track, wins. Hmm. So there's no like. Is there a land where I might find more of your kind? Hmm. Uh, I thought there might be like a tire of racing challenge and then you get to the championships and win a bunch of gold or something, but apparently not. There's probably something like that. Somewhere, eventually. Uh, where the fuck are we going now? See, business is booming, apparently. So, we start in G major, and... I told you, the piece is sad. Melancholy. It needs a minor key. But I wanted to ruin everything. We'll start in E minor. <laughs> well, well. See, the crew's been hard at work. Not bad. No, no, not all. But I'd imagine something more, you know, more theatrical. Don't you like it? But I thought a boudoir would be right in line with your tastes. Oh, you chose it. Well, I'm not saying it's bad, just different. <laughs> Not exactly what I'd envisaged. You know, now that I think about it, you're absolutely right. A oh, boudoir is the perfect setting for a cabaret. What about Rotlick? Did you get the placards? Rotlick said he'd bring them on his own. Should be here soon. Great! The best way I can think of to promote the chameleon. Never mentioned wanting to change the name. Rosemary and Thyme wasn't all bad, but it conjured images of Tumerian cuisine served by waitresses in peasant garb. Chameleon's a lot better for a cabaret, apart from which it emphasizes that the place has undergone a transformation. Just a better ring to it all round. What about choreography? Prepared anything special for the opening? We haven't, but Polly has. She's priceless came in and brought the girls in line before I could say knickers. Premier will have the audience on their feet, on their knees, both at the same time. <laughs> Guess everything's ready. So when's the opening? Soon. We start our dress rehearsal in an hour. I just need to knit back home for my dress. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Don't mention it. Seems my cabaret dreams are about to come true. So, around to celebrate? I'm buying. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Why not? That's my boy. Say the black. The foreman mentioned he saw you and Priscilla talking. He saw right. And... She say anything about me? <laughs> yeah, she said he's fat and you smell. <laughs> uh, I won't. I won't talk with him. 
She said something that made me think she's not entirely normal. What? That you're responsible, got your feet planted firmly on the ground. You're pulling my leg. Not this time. You know what's the best? One thing's eating me. Scheme. <laughs> How do you manage to get the loan from Sophronia? Oh, it wasn't easy. She got so excited about our performance, I had to read to her for four hours. Four hours from the cloak and the dagger. You mean you didn't? Are you crazy? Who do you think I am? You? She's late, of course. She knew how important this night was to me. Of course she did. Probably just making herself gorgeous. Takes time, you know. So it's true. A woman's vanity knows no bounds. Ask the dandelion! Priscilla, she's... What? Speak, man! She's badly, uh, been attacked. They, they took her to Vomerius Hospital. Attacked? She's hurt? Geralt, come with me, please. Of course, let's go. Gods. Priscilla. Is she gonna live? Well, I'd say that's certain. Her condition's critical but stable. I beg your pardon, but you are a relative? R relative? No, a friend. A very close friend. Dandelion, correct? She uttered the name in her few moments of lucidity. I am Joachim von Gratz, head of surgery. Until recently, a lecturer at Oxenfurt Academy. Enough of the courtesies. What are her injuries, besides her eye? A concussion, cranial swelling, incision into her larynx, and scalding inside the throat and esophagus. Clearly someone forced her to imbibe a caustic fluid. So this was no ordinary attack, no robbery? Clearly not. It was the act of a demented mind, and not its first. How can you know that? Well, I've seen wounds like this. They're not the kind one would forget, don't you agree? In fact, just this week a corpse turned up in the morgue with similar injuries. And no heart. No heart? You mean that might have happened to Priscilla? Is someone looking into this? Probably not. This is Novigrad. Only the innocent burn here. Geralt, I know I owe you a hundred times over, but I need to ask you another favor. Find the bastard who did this. Happily. Find him. And kill him. Don't need any convincing. Come on, Dandelion. Let's think about what we can do. I... I would suggest examining the previous victim's corpse. It has yet to be autopsied. Doing so could very well provide some clues. No need to look astonished, gentlemen. As a surgeon, I know the importance of preventive medicine. Rather than wait for this maniac to strike again, I'd prefer to excise him. Not unlike a tumor. Great analogy. But this tumor's not gonna sit there, wait to be excised. Appreciate the help, but I doubt you know what you're getting yourself into. I know perfectly well, and I assure you I can take care of myself. Easy assurance to make, harder to back up. Especially if you've spent your whole life wielding a scalpel, not a sword. Look at this scar. Don't be shy. Any idea what leaves such a mark? A flail. Morning star, maybe. What do you think? A blow sustained at the operating table? No. Let me repeat, I know what I'm doing, and I wish to help. As you wish. Think they'll let me into the morgue? By the main entrance, certainly not. But you can also get inside through the sewers. The sewers? <sighs> the sewers. Travel them often, Doctor? As often as required for, uh, the pursuit of preventive medicine. Alternative treatments. Aggressive ones, I'm guessing. Interesting. We can discuss this en route. Are you ready? 
Sure. Mm hmm Ready and intrigued. I'll get whoever did this, Dandelion. Even if it's Hierarch Hemelfart himself. <laughs> Hemelfart. Thanks. Ah, uh, that's a glorious name. Whoever the developer did that come up with that Hemelfart. Yes. <laughs> Give that man a raise. You lead. Into the sewers. What could possibly go wrong? So, preventive medicine you practice in the sewers. What's that about? Think. Sewing up drown of the tombs can grow. Hear that? Been hearing it for a while. Draw your weapon. What now, you piece of filth? Ooh, brain. Straight, no sugar coating. Her wounds will heal, but it's her voice that concerns me. Surely you understand what a terrible blow that would be to a Trobritz. Enough to strip her of the will to live. Any remedy for that? I fear only your friend Dandelion can be of help on that count. Hmm. We're tracking the wrong quest. Annoyingly. Come on, Doc. Move your ass. Take the ladder. This is the place. Come. The quicker we take care of this, the better. Why? Got somewhere to be? Someone might disturb us. The coroner, for example. Or Reverend Nathaniel Pastodi. Very well. We seek the corpse of a dwarven woodcarver. Well, that's not a dwarf. Looks like Necrophage has got to this one. Dwarf. That's not a dwarf either. Calluses on the fingers, sawdust in the beard, clothes sticky with sap. Must be our dwarf. Excellent. I trust you don't grow weak in the knees at the sight of blood? Not a bit. Start the autopsy. Where? <laughs> to the genitals! Uh, no, I'd say the head. Maybe, yeah. Let's look at his head. Hair smells like it's burnt. Like he was in a fire. Notice anything else? That his eyes have been scooped out, for instance? See this? Incision made into the voice box. Indeed. So thin as to be nearly unnoticeable. A small, extremely sharp instrument. Scalpel. Yeah, but why? The wound is too small to bleed, and there are signs of swelling. The murderer... I believe he performed a tracheotomy, so the victim wouldn't die too soon. Let's examine the mouth. Burns. Blisters. Just like Priscilla's. 